check this out. The Anaconda. The undisputed king of large ship exploration and an Elite Dangerous, it's still the ultimate max jump range ship in this game. If you're willing to min-max and make some sacrifices. But, there's so many right ways to outfit this ship that I can't possibly cover all of them. So I'm going to hit on a few specific points of flexibility and leave the rest to you guys as the viewers to figure out how you want to set this thing up. If you're in the game long enough to have one of these, I'm going to assume that you've got the skill, the credits, and the engineering to be able to handle it well. So, core internals. Lightweight alloy, heavy duty grade 5 and deep plating. This remains true for basically all exploration ships and doesn't tend to change. However, the power plan options in an anaconda are extremely flexible depending on what types of sacrifices you're willing to make. I have here a 3A power plant with low emissions grade 5 and thermal spread. I have a number of optionals laid out in pre, uh, just to show what's possible, and several of them are turned off to power manage, which is essential if you want to run a lower power plant in this game. However, you do have the option of running something like a 2A Guardian hybrid power plant if you have that module unlocked. And you'll see, even at a meager size 2, it's producing more than enough power to run the ship with modules disabled. But we can actually go through and enable things like the cargo hatch and the planetary vehicle hangar while still remaining under the power threshold of a 2A power plant. Generally in exploration you are going to, if you're power managing, run with stuff like this disabled. Just because it, it helps the ship run cooler and helps you manage higher heat output from less efficient reactors. And the Guardian hybrid power plants are definitely less efficient. You have to be a little bit careful with them, but in return for being careful, you get the lightest possible power platform that the Anaconda can support. So if you're min-maxing for jump range, this is going to be the go-to that most people will run on. But I don't tend to min-max for jump range because I prefer to have more forgiving builds that manage unpredictable situations well. And that means that at a minimum, I'm running something like a 3A low emissions with thermal spread. And that just barely powers what you see outfitted here. Although I believe the ship I'm running in the game currently is running something like a 4A, maybe even a 5A. I'd have to double check. But you can run just about any size reactor you want. And I should note that like the reactor sizes don't become mass significant until you get up into something like the 6A or the 7A. But a 5A is only 10 tons, a 4A is 5 tons, a 3A is 2.5 tons. You can see how the weight scales as, as the module size goes up. So it's basically up to you. But the difference between something like a 2A Guardian power plant, which comes in at an unladen jump range of 62.1, and a 5A power plant, which comes in at 61.19, is it's about a light year. So I guess it really depends on, on whether or not that light year is going to affect your fun. It doesn't tend to affect my fun to run something like a 5A, so you'll tend to find me running larger reactors on my exploration ships because I'm willing to sacrifice that jump range, especially if it makes running the Neutron Highway easier. I'll get into the Neutron stuff as I start talking about fuel scoops and AFMs here in a minute. Thrusters are nothing fancy. 5D thrusters, dirty grade 5, and drag drives. I usually like to run the smallest, lightest thruster package that the game will let me equip, which is what is currently set up on here. It keeps power under control and also helps control costs a little bit, although the main reason I like to do it is for jump range, because there is not really any reason to run larger thrusters on high G worlds. The game will buff thruster output so that you always have the ability to escape. I kind of wish that weren't the case, but it is, and so until FDev decides to try to adjust that mechanic, it's, you know, 5Ds are fine. You can run A's. The major advantage you get on high G worlds is a little bit of extra maneuverability and a little bit better heat management. The way that the game makes up for buffing your thruster output is that it increases the amount of heat the thrusters produce when you're trying to escape. So if you are going to undersize your thrusters, it's important to have a heat sink launcher over in your utility mounts. 6A frameshift drive, increased range grade 5 with mass manager. Unfortunately, this is too big to take advantage of the tech broker frameshift drive, so you'll have to pay Felicity Farseer a visit. However, uh, the 6A still outperforms the 5A on the Anaconda with the right setup, so don't feel like you're missing out too much. The 5D life support is pretty much standard among explorers, although in some cases you'll see A-rated life support just for extra peace of mind. 
A lightweight grade 5 gets you everything for 1.2 tons. A 3A power distributor. There's a lot of flexibility here. I like to run a size 3 distributor, but you could go down even smaller with the right engineering. This one's engine focused, but even with engine focusing, uh, I can run the one pulse laser on here basically indefinitely, which is nice for things like guardian beacons. You could put a huge in there if you wanted to, uh, a huge pulse laser if you felt like it, but uh, there's not really much reason. The only reason this is in here at all and positioned in the center line large hardpoint is to trigger guardian beacons and maybe provide ground support at a guardian ruin. The 8D sensor package is lightweight grade 5 and the fuel tank is stock unchanged from uh, the factory default. Optional internals. Most people who run Endacondas will run a 7A fuel scoop, but it's such a big scoop that if you wanted to stick something else in the side 7 slot, you could run a 6A fuel scoop without sacrificing too much scoop time. But that tends to be less common. So for the purposes of this video, I'll stick to my 7A fuel scoop recommendation. The 6A AFM goes in the optional right beneath it and is a good choice for something like an Anaconda because it gives you a lot of ammo capacity and repair efficiency, albeit at the cost of power consumption. In order to run this, you need to turn other modules off, which can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's manageable if you know what you're doing. Uh, I prefer larger AFMs to smaller ones for exploration purposes because the synthesis recipes on AFMs can be a little expensive. It's not like terrible. You can plan around it, but uh, it also helps if you're trying to repair something like a frameshift drive on neutron jumps. You don't have to constantly stop and synthesize more materials for it. These two size 6 optional slots are empty because there's so many different things you can stick in them. It's really up to you how you want to play here. But one common recommendation that gets thrown out is a 6D fighter hanger or a 6G planetary vehicle hangar, which may become more popular as Odyssey gets closer. There's a lot of speculation over how, what kinds of gameplay mechanics will be available with multi-crew SRVs, which we are getting once Odyssey drops. I suspect that a 6G planetary vehicle, vehicle hangar will become a popular add-on for exploration builds and even for some ground assault builds, as it would mean that a crew of three on a typical ship can have two people can have all three SRV bays three out of four SRVs loaded and still have one spare in reserve if you need it. The other size six slot could be used for something like a shield generator or even a cargo rack if you felt like hauling anything around, though I would probably stick Olympic controller in this bay before I would stick something like a cargo rack in. Um, you could also oh um, what am I doing? You can also stick something like the Guardian Frameshift Drive Booster in. A very powerful module that I recommend anyone stick in their builds who's doing anything uh, that involves long-range exploration. It does increase power consumption, so you do have to manage that, but with the reactor that I've got in here, that's not going to be an issue. If you're running something like a two-way Guardian power plant, you might start running into some issues there. Let me pull that up. Yeah, uh, we're pushing this build to the max with a two-way, but it's still something that you should definitely have in here. You'll note that I have in the optional slots right below the frameshift drive booster a 5C fuel tank. This adds an additional 32 tons of fuel capacity for 64 total maximum fuel storage. This is going to be controversial. I know a lot of explorers who are diehard jump range min maxers, but I am not one of them. I don't see much of a need to run smaller tanks on the Anaconda specifically because Running a smaller fuel capacity for a ship this size with a size 6 frameshift drive means that you only get three or four max range jumps per tank. I don't much care for that because it means you have to constantly babysit your available fuel. Most explorers will overcome this by filtering their, uh, their plotted routes for scoopable stars only, which works, but it does always leave you vulnerable to the possibility that you'll hit a patch of brown dwarfs or other non-scoopable stars where you can't get anything. This becomes more of a risk when you're near the fringes of the galaxy or in some specific areas between the galactic arms. You can navigate around them and you can use things like FSD synthesis to overcome or extend your three to four jump max, but I tend to just not deal with that at all by throwing the extra tank in because it also gives you the ability to more efficiently leverage neutron highways. If you have to constantly drop out 
and find a scoopable star to load your whole tank, it reduces the effectiveness of the neutron highway such that just conventionally jumping can sometimes be faster. But with two fuel tanks in here, the Anaconda gets seven to eight max range jumps before it runs out of fuel. And that means that you can stay inside of a neutron highway branch for a lot longer before you have to drop out and worry about fuel management. I can actually do a dedicated video on neutron jumping later on, because that's a, a critical skill for long range exploration if you ever plan on getting into it. Now, one other quirk with this build is that the Anaconda, being a large ship, with the engineering on its core internal armor, gives you the flexibility to choose to run shieldless. You're not made of tissue paper and you've got an absolute hole that's high enough that you can deal with a lot of environmental damage before you have to start worrying about getting killed. Now I still choose to add a 2D hull reinforcement package into the military slot because it gives us an extra 350 armor and just helps harden things up if you choose to run shieldless, which does have advantages for min-maxing jump range. But if you don't want to run shieldless, the size 6 empty slot here that I've left open could be used for a shield as well. It could also be used for a fighter hanger, which can be useful for deploying something disposable you can use to test out anomalies, fly in a high-risk environment, or support ground operations at a settlement or a guardian site. I should caution commanders who want to support operations at a settlement because the damage it's looking like the ground settlements will do an odyssey will be high enough that uh, the anaconda will get ripped apart pretty fast without a stiff shield. So you might park the anaconda behind a mountain or something and come in with the fighters from a distance if you wanted to use that strategy. To overcome the shieldless setup that we're running, I've recommended a 5D repair Olympic controller. You could put a smaller one on if you wanted to, but because there's enough hull in here, it, it could actually take a while to repair if you run something smaller than a 5. Um, fives give you plenty of flexibility, so you won't be constantly synthesizing limpets. You've got not a lot of power consumption and not a lot of weight, so a, a 5D repair limpet controller is going to be a good bet there. It's also paired in here with a 5D collector limpet controller. This is because the Anaconda does not manually scoop well, and there are a couple of occasions exploring where you might come across commodities you wish to collect. Guardian beacons are a good example of this. A 5D collector limpet controller Lightweight grade 5 only weighs 1.2 tons and consumes very little power even when it is running. So it's kind of an easy thing to throw in there if you want to just make sure that you're equipped for that kind of an outcome. Now I've talked about potentially having a 6G planetary vehicle hanger, but if you don't want to go that route, then a 4G planetary vehicle hanger is what most people run when they set builds like this up, and some will even undersize the optional internal and run a 2G planetary vehicle hanger. For general exploration, I still recommend a 4G, however, because it gives you redundancy and a little bit of freedom to take risks with an SRV because you've got a spare in there. So if you wanted to jump into a geyser and see how high you could go in a low-G world, potentially launching yourself into orbit, the 4G gives you a little bit of peace of mind knowing that you've always got that backup unit in case your favorite one gets blown up. There is an empty size 4 slot here that I've left open to illustrate that you've got a lot of flexibility here. You could throw whatever you want in here, an additional fuel limpet controller, or an additional planetary vehicle hanger, or anything really that suits your heart's desire. There's so much flexibility here that I don't really have any single recommendation that could go in here. Though I do recommend the other size 4 optional have a cargo rack of 16 tons. This gives you plenty of space for limpets or other commodities you might encounter, and there really aren't a lot of options for smaller places you could stick the cargo rack. The size 2 optional is a super cruise assist module, which I've detailed as one of the best tools for exploring binaries the game offers you. It lets you overcome long flight times by letting your ship fly itself while you go off and do chores or something around the house. Detailed surface scanner is a requirement for any kind of long-term exploration, um, and I also recommend that commanders take the time to get the expanded probe scanning radius blueprint, grade 5, which makes it easier to hit efficiency targets without spending a ton of time on an individual planetary body in a given system. Hard points is a 3E pulse laser, lightweight grade 5 and flow control. Um, for tripping guardian beacons and occasional small combat engagements that might take place on the ground where the anaconda could support. 
but it is not for general combat. You don't want to be getting in fights in a ship, especially if you're choosing to run shieldless, which you don't have to do. Again, if you want to put shields in here, you can slap one in the size 6. You'll probably need to put a bigger power plant than the 2A Guardian Hybrid on. You could put a 3A Guardian Hybrid or even step up to something like a 5A power plant that's low emission so you can keep your, uh, your heat and your power easy to manage. I'm going to, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to say a 5A reactor because it just does not cost you that much in, in jump range. Even unladen, we're still at 71.35 light years, which is plenty, believe me. Utility mounts. You can fill these empty slots with a ton of stuff, but the cores that I always recommend on exploration ships are a heat sink launcher for high G worlds and occasional stellar overheats that can take place if you pop in between two binaries on a drop. And then a point defense for Guardian Ruins, which I just accidentally deleted. My bad. Stick that back in. Engineering-wise, I recommend lightweighting both of these because, you know, why not? But when you're talking about a 6A frameshift drive, the impact that lightweighting has isn't very big. I mean, the amount of materials you'll spend lightweighting both of these gets you, you know, just a little teeny bit of a light year. Like, we, we went from like 71.1 to 71.5. It's just it's half a light year isn't that much. So if you want to optimize for uh, synthesis efficiency, you could take the heat sink launcher and put ammo capacity on it, giving things just a little bit better. Uh, and the point defense, I don't don't bother with uh, ammo capacity. Nobody ever runs out of point defense ammo. If you are going to engineer it at all, lightweight. But if you wanted to, you could just as soon not lightweight it. It only weighs half a ton. And that only took us from 71.5 to 71.21. Some guys like to min-max, though, and if that's your game, then yeah, lightweight is going to be your boy there. Uh, other optional utilities that you might consider. Uh, some explorers like to run Xenoscanners in case they encounter Thargoid-related content, though I'm not aware of any outside of the interceptors and ground sites, most of which require an SRV to interact with properly. Uh, let's see. As far as interceptors, I mean, everybody knows how those work. The other popular one that you can choose to equip that is definitely not mandatory is the frameshift wake scanner. Uh, typically these are derated because it's cheaper and consumes less power. On an anaconda you've got the flexibility to, you know, if you've got a bunch of power left over you can put a big one in here if you want, but neither one of these are, are strictly speaking a requirement. I still choose to run these two because, you know, they don't, they don't cost anything and even if they are power intensive you can just choose to turn them off and not worry about them until you need them. Uh, as far as these other empty slots, I mean, there's no specific requirement to fill them. You don't need to have all of your utilities running, and in a lot of exploration builds, you'll find that people just don't, because there's not really much of a need. Anyway, uh, that's the Anaconda in a nutshell, so I will catch you guys later.